Romans chapter 11. I say then, speaking about chapter 9 and 10, the Jews, has God cast away his people, his people, the Jews? God forbid. Well, what are you doing with religions out there that says God's all finished with the Jew? There it is. God is not finished with them. For I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. God has not cast away his people, which he foreknew. What ye not what the scripture saith of Isaiah? How he maketh intercession to God against Israel, saying, This is 1 Kings 19. Lord, they, the Jews, have killed thy prophets, and dig down thy altars, and I am left alone, and they seek my life. But what saith the answer of God unto him? I have reserved to myself 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal. There's going to be always a remnant of Israel. Protected, preserved by God. Again, like the Broadway. Many are going to go to Broadway, but few are going to give. God is not done with Israel. And we'll see this more in, in this chapter. He set them aside. That prodigal son, that individual, he's off in the hogs. Unclean. And yet the father never forsakes him when he comes back home repenting. Now, in the New Testament, it is no more corporate Israel as a group of people. It is an individual Israelite Jew. A corporate can't say, okay, we're going to believe on Jesus. It has to be an individual Jew will be saved. My jury of the Jews will burn in hell. I've got to say that. If they don't believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. But if a Jewish person, man or woman, will they believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, he will be saved and will go off to New Jerusalem in glory. But as far as the people, they're not done. Even so, them at this present time, Paul's writing, also there is a rendment according to the election of grace. There are Jews set off by God to always be a Jewish people, no matter through the church age, no matter through the tribulation period. There's going there's to be at least 144,000 Jews, at least. They're all of uh, the 12 tribes, two tribes executed. Joseph breaks in with one of the tribes and Levites. If you can say God's all finished with the Jews, what do you do when you got the 144,000? Wait, wait, wait. Before you get the Bible answer, explain to me why these people down the road from where I live say they're the 144,000 and Jews, even though they're broadcasting a million. If you go walk down there and say, listen, Mr. 144,000, 5,226,20. The Jehovah would say, Sir, let me ask you something. Honestly, just tell me what you, you believe God's all finished with a Jew. Yeah, I'm a Jew. I'm going to tell you something. And this is not prejudice. If you go over to what we call the compound on the other side of this city and watch them come out of their place, they're all colored people. You're the wrong color. I mean, the majority of them are colored people. I've sat at their gate and watched their cars come out. That's the wrong people. Jehovah's Witnesses will say that God's all finished with them and all the blessings go to them and they become a spiritual Jew. British Israelite, British Israelite, Armstrongism is the same thing. God's done with the Jew. It's us. Roman Catholic Church, you know that kingdom come? That's the promises that God gave the Jew saying, you got a piece of land. They take that piece of land and say, well, it's us now because God's all finished with them. Go over to Jerusalem. Find out who's giving the tours. Find out who's making the money. There are Roman Catholics there. But the 144,000 spoken about in the book of Revelation are Jewish people who know what tribe they are. God is not finished with them. And they won't be publishing or putting out any handbooks and watchtowers. I guarantee they'll be carrying a Bible. 
and it won't be a New World Translation. It'll be a King James. You know what James means? You know what James' is affiliation name of? Jacob. And by grace. Okay, here we go. By grace. By grace to the Jew. That is no more works. No more. It is no more of works. That was a hard thing to say. The law is gone. Otherwise, grace is no more grace. So if you say you're saved by works, there's no more grace. Works don't produce grace. You get wages from work. But if it be of works, then it is no more grace. No more grace. Otherwise, work is no more work. So when you have the nerve to say that your salvation is based upon what you're doing, you're you're saying God's grace is it, nothing, absolutely no beneficial when you do a work. And people who proclaim that are going to stand before God, Jesus Christ, at the great white throne judgment, and Christ is going to say, well, "Would you think grace was was illegitimate?" Why do you think grace was not so? Well, we never said that, Lord. Romans 11, 6. If it's works, there's no grace. I'm saved by grace. Why? Because I did not do nothing. Christ died. Christ was crucified. Christ was bruised. Christ was hung on the cross. What did I do? How can I say by works when it was nothing I did? All grace. What then? <clears throat> Israel has not obtained that which he seeketh for. Land. Corporate. They're not. It's not their land. It hasn't been their land. <coughs> they got to go. They had to go to Rome to crucify Jesus. But the election. Oh, here goes Calvin. Has obtained it, and the rest were blinded. So there are some Jews that God has set out. One hundred forty-four thousand. Great example. They're going to obtain it, and there's going to be some Jews that are not going to listen to that 144,000. They will be damned and go to hell. There will be a remnant of Jews in Salopetra when Jesus comes. Not all Jews. But there will always be a Jewish people. God's people. You know, many things wrong, but you know one of the biggest things wrong with the KKK? They don't believe the Jewish people. They hate the Jewish people. And they will tell you that. Well, sorry, you can't be a Christian. That's why probably why you burned the cross. You have no understanding. If there's anybody in the world you are to love, according to the Bible, is that Jewish man. If you got a dollar in your pocket, and a Jewish man comes to you, he's homeless, he has nothing, you give him that dollar. I don't, you don't ask him no question. Listen, I'm going to give you this dollar in the name of Jesus Christ, your Messiah. And what you do with that dollar, I'm going to take a chance with you. What, what you do with that dollar is between you and Jehovah. And don't you think if you give that Jew loving the Lord in the name of Jesus Christ, that dollar, not in trying him out, don't you think God would mess him up if he didn't do it right? Because he's the chosen one. Now, if somebody comes up to me, a Gentile, go, oh, can I have money? For oh, let me see. Let me go buy you. Say, oh, I don't want to. No, get out of here. I'm going to test you out. But the Bible says, him that blesses the Jew, God will bless. That doesn't go for Gentiles. According as is written. Uh oh, here's something written. God has given them the spirit of slumber, sleep. Israel, corporate, today, are asleep. They're napping. Eyes that they should not see. They can't see. Do you realize Jesus fulfilled 100% of the Bible of his first advent and they never saw that? Four hundred people, not more, testified in Jerusalem that he was risen from the grave. And, <clears throat> and ears that they should not hear. They're blind. So... What was the ministry of Jesus? They were blind. They were deaf. They were diseased with leprosy. 
when Jesus came, Israel was a sick nation. And I think it's Leviticus, one of the places of the blessings where I, I will give you grocery stores full. I will, your calves will bear it. You will produce children. You will have health. You won't have the disease of Egypt. But if you go against God seven times worse upon it, seven times even worse upon that, seven times even worse upon that, and seven times worse upon that, I am going to get you. And when they showed up, when Jesus showed up and healing, that's the condition of Israel under a curse. God gave them a chance to, through Jesus Christ. They're still under the curse as a corporate because they killed them and will not repent of what they've done. But they're still God's people. Some of them have to go to hell to pay that. There'll be no America or Americans in heaven. There'll be no German or Germans in heaven. But you mark my word, we'll be going to a place called where there's Israel. The land of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We, we'll be able to go there. The new earth. That's their land. Right now, today, they are in rebellion. They're blind. They're deaf. And they're sick. And David said, you know David was a prophet? Let their, Israel, table be made a snare. And a trap. And a stumbling block. And recompense on them. What a great king of God. That's David's prayer for the nation of Israel later. You guys are such in rebellion. Don't bless them, God. Let their eyes be darkened that they may not see. And bow down their back always. Bow down their back always. Wasn't there a woman that came to Jesus, bowed down? And he said, it's, he said so the... So the words were, Satan has bound her all these years. I can release her. No one else could have released her. We got to see, now we're going, as Paul is speaking about Israel, as we've already passed the Gospels, you can go back and see, Israel is a sick nation, but God's going to heal them. He's not done. I, I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid. Israel corporate will not fall. And I mean corporate as a mass group of people. But rather, through their fall, salvation has come unto the Gentiles. Well, that's kind of interesting. Because what do we speak of Genesis chapter 3 as? The fall of man. And we've become sinners. Paul says now the fall of the Jews. Corporate. Because Paul says hey listen I'm a Jew. I'm saying. Paulos, I think, no, I don't know if he's a Jew. Uh, Peter, James and John were Jews. They're saved. Paul says an individual I'm saved. But as a corporate. Adam and Eve as a corporate of all mankind. They fell. We've got sin. And Paul saying, because they've fallen, their fall has brought us Gentiles to God for to provoke them to jealously. If God is all finished with the Jews, then why are we getting saved? He, we're getting saved to say to those Jews, hey, look at that. What's it feel like for me to showing love and care to others? And wasn't Hosea that God said, go marry a whore? We're, we're husband and wife, Israel. How do you like me stepping out on you and going to somebody else? You really appreciate that? That's what you've been doing throughout the history. Now I'm doing it to you. I'm bringing those dead dogs, those, those scum people that you don't want to. I'm bringing them in. And I'm loving them. And they're loving me. For the attention, I want you to come back to me. I want to get you so jealous. But well, wait a minute, Lord. Well, what are you doing? Now, if the fall of them be the riches of the world, 
and the diminishing of them the riches of the Gentiles, how much more their fullness. For I speak to you Gentiles, okay, that's me. I was a Gentile, I'm a Christian. In some in as much as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, which apostles did the Jews give the hardest time to? Paul. Why? Because they hated the Gentile ministry he had. He'd go in the synagogues and there'd be Jew, uh, there'd be Gentiles with him. Uh, Timothy. He was half. His father was a Greek. His mother was a Jewish. If by any means I may provoke, uh, provoke to emulation that's equal or ex excel others, them which are my flesh, Jewish, and might save some of them. Not all, he didn't say all of them, did he? And we read 9, 10, 11, Paul's ultimate prayer is, God, they need to be saved. They're your people. I'm sorry to say, Gentile, but God would get more pleasure from a Jewish person that believes on Jesus Christ than an Italian. If that Jewish man would step out of his Jewish roots and step out of what the Jewish people have done to the prophets and to Jesus Christ and say, I believe on Jesus Christ as my Savior, God will be well pleased. And he don't become a Gentile, he becomes a Christian. And he joins family with me, and I'm not a Gentile to him. I'm a brother in the Lord with him. We're both Christians. He's not Jew. He's I'm not Gentile. Romans chapter 10. There's no more distinguishing of races. For if the casting away of them, Jews, be the reconciling of the world, what shall be receiving of them be but life from the dead? For if the first fruit be holy, the lump is also holy. And if the root be holy, so are the branches. Now we're going to get into the Israel and the Gentiles and relation of a branch. In a relationship with the vine. Christ being the vine already telling us that. Paul is going to take a parable of Jesus and step it one more step closer. I believe, and you can take this again, I believe Paul was around when Jesus spoke. By some of the illustrations, he, or either that, he's already, I don't, know, I don't know, I forget the Gospel of Luke is written yet. Or he's read Luke's Gospel, if possible. But he, he's too tight. I, I think he was around with Jesus. Okay. If some of the branches be broken off, right now, today, Jews, they will not believe Jesus Christ. They're broken off. They're broken off that Jewish Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And thou, me, being a wild olive tree. Olive tree is a type of Holy Spirit. It's the oil that was used to anoint the priests and the kings. See, I'm not a poison ivy. I'm a wild olive tree. According to Israel, I'm wild, untamed, but I'm still work graft in among them. Now, when you graft, you take a plant, you make a, a clipping in the plant. It's, a, it's like a wedge, and the branch that you want to put in that, plant, you make a wedge cut, and you put that that branch into where you made the cut in the vine, and you would tape it up, and within time that vine and that branch would be one they would actually some plants they would grow together and become one plant israel was like that with god but some of the branches he had to wop off they don't want to believe in jesus so you and wasn't there it wasn't one of the things jesus said it cuts down cast into the fire but here comes hey Here's a branch that's not part of the natural branch, but he believes, so we're going to put him into that vine. And my fruit, according to this, should be olive berries. Holy Spirit. We're grafted in among them. Among who? Jews. 
I'm on the same vine as Paul, Peter, James, and John. And we're all doing the same fruit. All of us, I hope. Our job as Christians, according to Romans chapter 10, is once we're grafted into Jesus Christ, a branch is supposed to produce fruit. And with them partakers of the root and the fatness of the olive tree. Christ is that tree. Our fruit is to be olives. Olives type of the Holy Spirit. We're supposed to produce fruit together. Boast not against the branches. Look who I am. Look how many people I got. Look how many olives I got on my side compared to look at that branch up there. He ain't got as much olives as I am. Oh, I was the first branch to be put into this tree, folks. Well, I, I'm the biggest branch of all these. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. But if thou boast, if you're going to boast about who you are, thou bearest not the root, but the root, but the root thee. The root is what provides nurturement. The root provides the water. The root provides the food. You're going to boast. You ain't going to get that from God. God ain't going to take care of you. Well, not for the whole plant. It, it's God will cut off your feeding as a branch. Everybody else will be fed. You're just going to... You ever see, you ever see some trees where um, they got one or two branches just dead, but the rest of the tree is all healthy? That's a picture of uh, some of the evergreens up north. You know, you see these big, tall trees and, you know, the branches on the bottom have fallen off, have died. Thou wilt say then, the branches were broken off, that I might be grafted in. Okay, number two, number 18 is, again, don't boast because you're Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's trouble. I'm a Jew. I'm a seed of God. Snap. Lord God, I'm just a humble. I'm just a dead dog. I am not worthy even. Oh, Lord God, please save me. I am so sorry. My Lord, I'm just, I'm not even mentioning. Ow, what are you doing, Lord? I'm fixing you to be part of the vine. I'm fixing you to be part of the fig tree. And when those dead branches lay at the bottom on the ground of that tree and look up and see a Gentile up there. Huh, what did you do that for? He's not of us. He didn't have the law. No. I have grace. Verse 6. As a branch of God, verse 6, can I graft myself into a plant? I can't. I need someone to step in and do it. I cannot put myself into a plant to grow a plant. That's works. No grace. But when God through the Holy Spirit, through Jesus Christ, takes me and puts me in that plant and grafts me in, that's grace. And he does that over all that reject him. Especially the, the Jews corporate that rejected him. The high priests, the elders, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, who did not believe on Christ. They're laying on the ground dead as they look up and say, oh, look at those Gentiles up there. As Jonah sat under a what? A what? A branch? He made a booth of what? Branches as he would watch to see the city get destroyed. And God gave him a little fruit, a gourd. Jonah would not be happy here. He would not be happy to look up at that tree and say, there's Gentiles there. Gross. That's going to produce wild olives. No, nope, not anymore. It's going to produce a new creature. We're going to see that in a minute. A new olive. An olive of God. Where God would say, those Gentiles, I, I am pleased with those Gentiles. You Jews that didn't do right, I ain't pleased with you. I'll gather you up and put you in a fire. For if God not spared the natural branches, Jews. Wait a minute, verse 20. Well, because of unbelief, they were broken off. Why will these Jews go to hell? They did not believe. You get that first chapter. What do you need for salvation? Belief. 
So what's another important thing that we saw in the Gospels for him that we read? There were some Sadducees. There were some Pharisees that did believe. They may have been in secret, Joseph and Martha, Arimaeus and Nicodemus, but they're not broken off. They're in that tree. You've got to have a belief. What are you going to do? Believe what you can do? And thou standest by faith. Believe and faith. Now be not high-minded, but fear. Now don't, don't, don't go sticking your nose at the Jews now. Nye, 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 nye. I'm God first and you are hell. Nye, 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 nye. For if God spared not the natural branches, the Jews, take heed, least he also spared not thee. Hey, one, you know what's coming in the tribulation period that movies are lying about? The tribulation period is not for Gentiles. You're not going to beat the beast. You're not going to beat the number. And you're not going to be saved. Only the Jews. Salvation is wrought with what you do to the Jew for their comfort, for their blessing. Gentiles, don't get too bragging because I'm going to cut you off soon. The way things are going today be sooner than, than you think. Because you're in that tree right now because the Jews are cut off. But I'm going to cut you guys off and I'm going to put the Jews back in. I can tell you right now, at least 144,000 more olive trees are going to go back in that tree, at least. So God's not done with them. For if God spared not the natural branches, the Israelites, Take heed, least he also spare not thee. Romans. Speaking to the Romans. And Gentiles. Behold, therefore the goodness and severity of God. I have no goodness. On them which fell, Jews, severity. They rejected. They had no belief, it just said. But toward thee, the Gentiles, goodness. If thou continue in his goodness, otherwise thou also shall be cut off. How many Romans do you think today, 2016, are getting wrapped into that tree? Not many. I bet you they were getting saved by, by hundreds full in Paul's time. They got too proud. They got too religious. They got too much in their works. And they're falling off. The nations are dying. Being broken off. People are getting saved. But what nation today stands for God? There's a few of them. There are a few nations where the leader of that country is for God, stands for God in the Bible. Very few. America is not one of them. You hate when I say stuff like that. And they also... If they abide not still in unbelief, shall be grafted in. For God is able to graft them in again. So those Jewish corporate are coming back. Not the ones that didn't believe. But there will be another generation of Jews that will believe. And God will love them as he loved the Gentile. And he will graft them back into the tree as he told the Gentiles. For if thou were cut out of the olive tree, which is wild by nature, me, and were grafted contrary to nature into a good olive tree, Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit, how much more still shall these, which be natural branches, Jews, be grafted into their own olive tree? So they're going back. Not the ones of unbelief, but there is a generation of Jews, generation of Jews. That will be put back in that tree. By faith. There will be a revival coming up in the world. Jews will turn to the Messiah and believe on him. And God will put them back in that olive tree. And to a Jew, that olive is the anointing of a priest. The anointing of a king. It is the Holy Spirit. 
Today, it's individual Jew. It's not corporate. Later on again, it will be a corporate Israel. Ready? For I would not, brethren, talking to the saved Christians now, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery. Here's one of the five mysteries of Paul. Ready? Least ye should be wise in your own conceit. Stop bragging. Get off your high horse. That the blindness in part is happened to Israel. Unto the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. What is this mystery? God has blinded Israel corporately so the Gentiles can get in. That's a mystery. As the times of Dan, uh, the times of Gentile has spoken by Daniel. We are in a period right now, the nation of Israel, corporate, are blinded so we can get in. And once the days of the Gentiles is done, God will get back to his people. After a severe punishment for what his people have done to him, called Jacob's trouble. And in that period, the only way a Gentile is going to get any kind of salvation is his conduct to the Jew. And if you don't treat that Jew right and you curse him, you, that's it. You're done. You're gone. So watch this. And so all Israel shall be saved. But what do you do with that? When, as is written, there shall come out of Zion. The Deliverer, Second Advent, and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob, the millennium and eternity. There it is. That is not Jesus Christ, the First Advent. He couldn't be the Deliverer. They rejected him. Real, you realize in Acts chapter one there was only eleven men that were followed him. Judas was gone. Had the rapture or some kind of the world end at, at Acts chapter 1, only 11 men from the entire church age were going to heaven. And they would have been all Jewish. For this is my covenant unto them, God speaking, when I shall take away their sin. Jeremiah 31, 33. Corporate Israel will have their sins removed one day by God. And that angers all the nations. That angers all the Arabs. That, that angers the Americans. That angers uh, Germany. That angers England. But what gives them the right and over us, the greatest nations of all the world? Pride. And God said, I chose Israel. I didn't choose you. As concerning the gospel, now get this. Listen. They are enemies for your sakes. Do you know who your first number one enemy will be to try to get you to stop passing up gospel tracts? You know who to be number one enemy to try to stop you from preaching on the street? You know who will try to stop you from getting the gospel of Jesus Christ? What did Paul just say? There will be a Jew behind it. But as touching the election, I'm not going to Calvin, who God has chosen. He chose Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They are beloved for the Father's sake. You better be careful how they treat you. If you find out some way a Jew is trying to stop your ministry, you better not pray against him. I will curse them that curse you, he told that Jew. Save their loss. But Paul says they are an enemy to us. You better be careful how you treat them. You find out a Jew is going against you and whatever work you're doing for Jesus, you better pray for that Jew. And still pray for your work to get going and do what you need to do, but you say, Paul, I say, Lord, they're my enemy, but they're still your people. Now, Lord, as their father as your as them are your father, as you are their father and their husband. You want to take control of your wife for me, please? She's being a little bit of because I ain't going to do it. I'm going to pray for that Jew for good. I'm going to pray for the ministry I'm involved for good. I'm going to leave it up to you.
for the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. Ephesians 4.8, 1 Corinthians 12. For as ye in times past have not believed God, lost, yet have now obtained mercy through their unbelief. Well, look at that. Had the Jews never not believed Jesus, I don't know how the Gentiles would got in. So here's a question. You want a trivia question for Bible belief? Is there ever a way you can get to God, Jesus Christ, to the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ by unbelief? Well, no, you got to believe. Yeah, Israel's unbelief. The fact is that they rejected Christ. I get to come in the picture now. And I become part of Abraham. Paul has told us earlier. Even so have these also not believed. Jews in this present time. That through your mercy. They also may obtain mercy. Now how do you do that? You tell them about Jesus. You get them away from the, Now let's go back over here again. Let's, let's see what happens over here. Verse 8. If by grace then it is no more work. Otherwise, grace is no more grace. But if it be of works, then it is no more grace. Otherwise, work is no more work. You are to get that Jew out of the law and into Jesus Christ for them to receive grace. How's that? Now that you're saved, now that you know what the Holy Spirit, you are to go to that Jew when God gives you an opportunity and get them out of the law. Get them off their works they're bragging about and show them grace. Jesus Christ. Won't God be pleased when you do that? I pray for every once in a while for God to send me a Jewish person my way. That I would be faithful enough in the word. For God has concluded them all in unbelief. That he might have mercy upon all. Gentiles are in because the Jews got out. All oh, the depths of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. This is all the mystery. Because of the disobedience of Israel, I am now in. Israel is my enemy, but I am not to treat him like an enemy. And yet Christ says, love your enemies. Do good and then persecute. Man, that's a reversal of Jewish to, to people. Now it's Gentile saved to the Christ, to the Jewish person. Oh, the depth of the riches, both of wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. For who has known the mind of the Lord? I haven't. I can't even fathom God. Or who has been his counselor? Who's, who's going to give? Who's God going to come down and say, "Can I ask you some advice?" Now, some scholars in schools, they would think it'd be them. I've seen a couple of pastors in the book, and I'm reading a book right now, and they would think God would come down and ask them his opinion. You know, what Job said when God finally spoke to him, "I'm just dust and ashes. I'm going to shut up. You speak." I've been griping, complaining all these chapters. I've heard you. Speak, Lord. Or who has first given to him, and it shall be recompensed unto him again. Who has given God something that God's going to give back to you? I mean, can you just picture God coming up? Oh, listen, can I have ten dollars? I gotta go get me a hamburger. Can you give me some fish food? I ran out of fish food to feed, to feed the whales. And you guys are such save the whales. I come to you first for you to help me feed the whales. Can you give? I'll give it back to you in return later. Okay. God going down to these aquarium places. Hey, can I borrow some food so I can feed the ones in, in the in the wild? I'll make sure you get plenty of fish to feed your animal. But I, no, 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 no. We get everything from God. For of Him. And through him and to him are all things. To whom be glory forever. 
Amen. And what we've been talking about, the contents, is the salvation that the Gentiles have got by the Jews rejecting. Go to the Jews, retreat them with respect, witness to them about mercy. And we go back to ch chapter 10. What are we to do? We're to preach the word of God that their hearts may believe, that their mouth may confess. And that's what's going on in the book of Acts right now. They're, they're believing and they're going out preaching and the Jews are giving them a hard time. Romans is playing out in the book of Acts. Paul, didn't they try to stone it? Yeah, they did that because they're angry at God. I got up and went and preached more. Paul, didn't they whip you? Yeah, they whipped me. I went to court. In the courtroom, I spoke Jesus Christ. I, I got out and went somewhere else. Don't you hate them, Paul? No, I wish they all got saved. And the lesson we get here is, man, they, Paul has been tortured. He has been prisoned. His life has been turned upside down because of these Jews. And his response is, oh, they would only get saved. As a conduct. 